Today we're going to build this lovely translucent and transparent acrylic model of a coreless type steam engine. And when we finish building it, I'll show you how it works and explain uh, what's quite interesting about this type of steam engine. So, as with all of our kits, uh, you will get a bag full of parts that will include uh, metal, screws, nuts and bolts and things like that, and various pieces of acrylic. When you get it, all of the acrylic will have protective film coatings on it. Uh, a lot of it is blue film, some of it is paper film, some of it is a sort of a milky, uh, transparent, loose, translucent film, uh, and some of it is actually a white plastic, opaque white plastic film. Um, whatever it is, any part that isn't either completely glass clear or a transparent, uh, tinted transparent piece um, needs to be peeled. So uh, we have a special video about how to peel acrylic in a frustration-free way. Um, but here, to save time, I have pre-peeled everything. So let's get right to it. Um, you'll see there are four, pe four large pieces that are all basically the same overall outline. Uh, two of them are the same thickness of approximately a sixteenth of an inch or one and a half millimeters. And there's one piece that's thicker and one piece that's very thin and flexible. Of the two equal thickness ones. Um, one of them you'll see has the mechanical GIF logo down here engraved in it. You want to start with that one. That's going to be the top. And holding it so that the engraving is on the top and you see the word mechanical GIF, probably can't see it in the video, but in person you'll be able to see it, is, is sticking up and you can read it correctly. Holding it that way, we want to take uh, the Lar these screws, there's a large batch of screws that are all the same length, and there's one screw that's longer. We're going to take these screws that are all the same length and put one into basically every single hole here that is the correct size for such a screw. Um, and there's a lot of them. This model has a quite extraordinarily large number of holes. Now there are two holes, right here and right here, which the screws don't fit into, and they are labeled in. Both of them are labeled in. Those are steam intake holes. So those two holes don't get a screw, but every other hole does. And uh, the reason that there are so many screws in this model is oops, one doesn't get one is that there are quite a few internal parts that all need to be held in place. Uh, and because of the complexity of the valves in this design, there's lots of those. The coreless engine is significantly more complicated mechanically than any of the sort of more common steam engine designs and any of the sort of standard model engines that you would get. Um, but in exchange, it's more efficient. Uh, coreless, by the way, is the name of a person, C-O-R-L-I-S-S. -S. It's not like lacking a core. Uh, okay, so now I've got every screw everywhere, except those two. Now we take this uh, other piece, just sort of temporarily, we're going to use it to hold all the screws in place. Put, press it on like this, flip it upside down, and set it down. I strongly encourage you to have all your pieces laid out in a nice, clean, well-lit area uh, ahead of time. So now slide this out, and now we're left with all these screws sticking up. Um, and we can now begin to assemble uh, pretty much the entire mechanism here. So first thing we do is take this is the thick one, three millimeters or about an eighth of an inch thick. And we need to find the, you know, the one unique alignment. It won't fit this way, it won't fit that way. It will fit only this way, where this cutout here matches that cutout. And all the holes will match and it drops right in. Now, all these pieces go in certain places here. And I'm going to be referring to the copy there um, to get this right. So this piece goes here. Uh, this piece, which for some reason makes me think of a state, um, that one goes here. This large one goes here. It may be easiest to actually refer to a, a photograph of um, the finished engine 
uh, to be sure you're getting each piece in just the right place. That one goes there, and the smallest one, it goes up here with the bigger side facing down. Okay, so now we have sort of the cavity has been formed where all the moving parts will go. Uh, next, we're going to put the, the valves in and the various sort of parts that keep them going. Um, these two orange, these are the inlet valves. You see they have sort of like a flat surface here. Um, they go on these two screws with the flat surface facing in towards each other. So one there and one there. And they're able to move back and forth like that. Then this part uh, goes above both of them and it's going to move back and forth like that. Then we have this sort of a toggle lever thing. It goes here. You see all the orange pieces are going together. This is the, the inlet, the hot, it's orange, it's hot, it's the hot steam inlet valves. Uh, now we have the exhaust valves which are blue because it's sort of colder, lower pressure. They are um, not symmetrical. They look, you know, like, like they're close to symmetrical, but they kind of angle farther in one direction than another. And the, the one, the side that's angled more faces in towards each other. So the, each one goes in with its more strongly angled side sort of towing in together and they also swivel back and forth like that. And then we have this um, this piece here which goes there and those you know balls fit in a little C-shaped socket so that those move together. And then we have this L-shaped bracket. It goes facing this way in here, uh, engaging there. So that moves that. You can already sort of start to see how this is going to work. Uh, then this guy goes here, like that. If you put it too far, it'll fall, so you kind of slide it this way for the time being. Uh, now we need to put in the, the green part, which is the piston. Um, and the big part fits there. It will go back and forth and move the orange parts. And then this connecting rod goes there and the blue one fits around the green part. And you see I've arranged it here so it's just the weight so it doesn't tip into the hole. That will all get stabilized once the next piece goes on. Okay, finally we have the spring. And these springs are very easy to lose. They, they spring off so we give you two of them even though you only need one. Um, to put that spring in, you need to sort of move these levers outwards to separate the two anvil surfaces there, and then drop the spring in between them. And there, there isn't really any compression on the spring. It just fits tight right between the two. So it should just lie there. Um, so now we have the, the basically the entire mechanism assembled, but it's very delicate. If you pick it up now, all the screws will fall out and the whole thing will we just have to start over. So next is to, to stabilize it. We take this, this flimsy thin piece. This one in particular tends to come with a film that is a little bit transparent, but again, if it's not glass clear, then it's got a film on it that needs to be removed. Uh, this one has all the funny little pieces connected, so it actually, again, it will go only one way, and you drop it on and just kind of wiggle around, and they're cut very precisely, so it will just drop in place. And then we take the bottom, uh, which is engraved without, because it has the uh, steam exhaust valves in it, and drop that on in the only way that it goes, like that. So now everything is tight, all the screws are in. And now, uh, before we do anything else, we're going to put all the nuts on. So the easiest way to do that is by sort of press down a little bit and uh, that will hold the screw in so it doesn't rotate and then you can spin the nut on. And all we're doing right now is just spinning them on. Uh, you don't have to make them tight at all. Just, to, just enough that the screw won't fall out when we tighten it. And go around. 
to all of them. This is at least twice as many screws as any of my other steam engine models have, just because of uh, yeah, just the, the tremendous complexity of the mechanism, but which is part of its advantage. One difference between the coreless design and the simpler ones is that there are completely separate inlet and exhaust valves uh, not sharing any of the plumbing. And one of the advantages of that is that this side always stays hot and this side is always cold, or at least not as hot. Uh, whereas in a traditional design, the same pipes end up cycling back and forth between hot and cold, uh, high pressure and low pressure, and that uh, robs you of power and wastes some of the heat energy. So the, um, you, know, you pay the price of a more complex, more expensive design, but you gain an efficiency. And as we'll see when it's finished, efficiency is really the key to the coreless design, is why it was, uh, why it was such an advance. But in the meantime, there are still a lot of nuts to put on. Apologies for the number of nuts. If you can do this in real time, that's amazing, but more likely you'll want to pause the video. We're down to just a few. If you forget one and you pick it up and a screw falls out, depending on which screw it is, you probably can get the screw back in again just by sort of maneuvering the thing. But I think I have them all now. Now we can pick it up. Uh, and now everything will sort of work as it, as it should and not fall apart. Um, but we need to tighten it using the screwdriver that is not here. Okay, well after that awkward gap that will be edited out, um, your kit will come with a screwdriver like this one. Um, and the next step is to tighten all the screws. Now there's actually a reason why we give you a tiny little screwdriver. The first reason of course is that it's very cheap. Um, but the other reason is that if you use a full size screwdriver to tighten all these screws, um, you could actually end up cracking the plastic. I mean it's strong but with the leverage you get from a full-size screwdriver, um, you, you could over-tighten them. With this tiny screwdriver, you can pretty much make them as tight as you are able to, and it won't crack. So I'm just going through here systematically tightening everything. Um, you see there are two different kinds of screws. There's ones that are going through the clear the sort of framework in between. Those you can really tighten as, as much as you like with the small screwdriver. The ones that are uh, actually pivot points for mechanisms, they, they will not bind because there was that thin extra layer that we added, which adds about a half a millimeter of clearance. But you don't want to over tighten them, just make them snug uh, because otherwise you, you're putting undue stress um, on the plastic because it's, you know, sort of has this half millimeter gap that's designed to let the moving parts move smoothly. So, going through here, getting everything tight. Okay, just feeling for any screws that feel loose. I think we're good. Okay, so we got everything together here. Now we just need to assemble the flywheel mechanism. So that we do we're using these parts. Now there are, there are four discs, they're all different. There are two big ones, two small ones, and you know there's a big one with two holes, a big one with one hole, a small one with two holes, a small one with one hole. We start with the big one with one hole. Take that one and we take the one long screw. And uh, so I have a little theory about these things. If you feel it, there's a one edge is a little rougher than the other. I like to have that face out so it's not rubbing against the plastic here. I don't know if it makes a difference, but that's what I do. So the smoother, the slightly smoother side, um, no, so the rougher side, put the screw through the rougher side like that. 
so this is the rough side on the top here. Then flip it over, set it down. Then we take the small one with one hole. Small one with one hole goes on the screw. And then there are these washers here. So there's different thicknesses. There's these three millimeter thick, eighth inch thick washers, and those very thin ones. We take one of the three millimeter ones and two of the very thin ones like that. And we give you an extra thin one or two because they're easy to lose. Okay, now that we've got that put together, uh, we want to um, hold this in such a way that the Mechanical Gifts logo is visible here, right side up on this side. Flip it over. This, the bottom of that is going to be the front of the model. And we want to set that here so that the green ring goes around that washer and the blue ring stays around there and then the small diameter disc, the one that's that size, will fit exactly inside this circular cutout in the bottom plate there. So this will now be sort of locked in place there. Then we take the small one with two holes, put that again the rough side out I like for some reason, it goes inside there, inside that cutout, and then the large one with two holes, rough side up, um, it goes on here. And that assembly there actually forms the, the, essentially the crankshaft bearing in a way that doesn't interfere with seeing what's going on there. Okay, now we take the, oh, I picked it up. That's, of course, the one thing you can't do. So you pick it up, it falls apart. So slide it back in place. Okay. That's good again. Okay, so picking it up in order to get to this, the second one of the three millimeter washers, put it on that screw. Now, before we attach the flywheel, we need to take one of these screws, the one of the remaining short screws, and um, might as well put, you may or may not need this washer on here, but I put it on there anyway just because it shortens the screw a little bit and avoids a potential problem down the road. So it goes through one of the two holes, doesn't matter which one, sticks through, and we put a nut on it on this side, and turn that on, and then tighten the nut. This is just forming a little peg here. So take the flywheel, set it on to that long screw, and then wiggle it back and forth so that this little peg screw goes through the two, the second hole in both layers of that, of those thinner pieces of plastic. And the washer there is just to make sure that, that screw doesn't stick too far down and interfere with the mechanism inside. We put a nut on here, and then the, the two on this side are locked in position by the fact that there's two pegs there. These can actually rotate, so what we want to do is just sort of eyeball it and get them lined up so they're centered uh, around that circle and then tighten it lightly and then just try spinning it through see if, if it turns easily if it's not turning easily it's because uh, one of these discs is not quite right and you can sort of you know tweak it back and forth a little bit and just or just spin it some and it will orient itself and then once it's running smoothly uh, tighten it more you can get it nice and tight and again if it's not running smoothly just kind of wiggle it a little bit uh, okay, and then you're done. So this, this is now the completed coreless engine. There's an arrow engraved here pointing that way because with this design of engine, it will only, the valve timing will only work correctly when it's rotating in this counterclockwise direction. Uh, if you want to have fun with it, you can, with some practice, hold it and spin it, make it run fast. Um, there you go, it's finished. But now let's discuss how uh, this actually works, how this mechanism works. So in, a, in a, the simpler common sort of model steam engine and, and many real steam engines, um, they're optimized for <clears throat> relatively simple mechanism and as much power as you can possibly get for the size of the cylinder. So they have inlet valves which open and you know, let's, say, let's say it's turning this way and you're pushing it this way with steam. You'd have an inlet valve that's open more or less for the entire stroke of the cylinder. And it's pushing, it's pushing, it's got high pressure steam coming behind it. And then when it reaches the other end, the valves switch, and we're talking here about the more traditional one, the valves switch, 
um, and start pushing the other direction, and it pushes the other direction all the way to the other side. Now the problem with this is that when you reach the other side, you have high pressure of steam inside the cylinder, and then the exhaust valve opens, because the exhaust valve has to open in order to allow the steam to exit while it's going in the other direction. At that point, you lose all that pressure. So you know, there's sort of a whole lot of wasted energy in this and wasted water in the steam that you're releasing through the exhaust valve. In a coreless engine, oh, and, and the way that you vary the power the, or the speed of the engine is by throttling back the steam pressure so that you're, you're always sending steam through it through the same length of time during the, the length of the piston stroke. But if you're running it slower or if it's under a lighter load, you run a, a lower pressure of steam. In a coreless engine, the Steam pressure is always full on, it's full pressure all the time, but it varies by way of a governor mechanism that's not shown here, it varies the length of time by which uh, the steam is, the steam valve is open. So if we look here at the inlet valve, where this thing is rotating, the piston is coming this way, this inlet valve is closed, so there's no steam making it in. As we come around, see just as the piston is arriving at the end of its stroke and changing direction, this mechanism is opening and this cavity here has now been filled with high pressure steam and it's pushing that way. But watch what happens. Almost as soon as the cylinder, uh, almost as soon as the uh, piston starts moving in this direction, the end of the valve is closing. And at this point we've now sort of given it a pulse of very high pressure steam and then stopped. And during the rest of the stroke of the piston here, the steam is simply expanding. And it continues to push, but it pushes less and less as it's expanding. And just ignoring that valve for now, at the end of the stroke, we get to here and the exhaust valve over here uh, opens up. And as the piston starts moving back this way, this exhaust valve is open. But when the valve opens, the pressure inside will already be fairly low because it, ex it expanded into the cylinder and sort of used up the energy there. And now we're exhausting relatively low pressure steam and relatively small amount of water. And the same thing happens in the other direction. When we're approaching here, there's sort of a puff, uh, puff of steam that's admitted and then it closes. Uh, and the way that you vary the speed or the power delivery of a cordless engine is by this very clever uh, governor mechanism, which is, is too complicated to put into this model, which varies the timing of the valves. So as you need more power, uh, it will allow the intake valve to remain open longer. And in the extreme, if you're running it you know, full on uh, at maximum power, it will be back to the behavior of uh, a more traditional engine where the inlet valve is open for as long as it needs to be, or as long as it can be, uh, to drive the piston full power all the way. So at that point the engine is not any more efficient than a traditional design and you're getting just as much power out of it. But, you know, usually you're not going to be running the engine at its full capacity and with a coreless design, when it's running under a lighter load, uh, it's significantly more efficient because it allows the energy content of the steam to be more fully consumed by the process of expanding in the cylinder. Um, much like, for example, in what's one of the advantages of an internal combustion engine, that when you have a fuel-air mixture and it's ignited at the, at the top of the cycle, after that, it's, it expands in the cylinder and you get to use up most of the energy or a good portion of the energy uh, implicit in that gas pressure through the expansion uh, into the into the cylinder. Anyway, so um, that's why the coreless engine has two completely different sets of valves. There's the exhaust valves, which are basically a sort of harmonic motion mechanism very similar to that of a traditional engine, um, except that's all they do is they open and close as needed for the exhaust to be open, and the exhaust is open you know, during the whole stroke because there's always going to be steam leaving. The inlet valves are completely different, and uh, you know, here I've modeled them using a spring 
and with fixed timing where it just is this is sort of in the most efficient possible mode where it's a very short pulse of steam right at the beginning if you imagine this engine running it under a very light load sort of idling um, in the real mechanism there's no spring there's instead a sort of a weighted dash pot mechanism and there's a governor which kind of keeps this part here engaged as long as it needs to be for the amount of power that's needed and then at the right moment this part is kicked off and the valve closes and the time which that happens is uh, is controlled by the governor based on the power requirement so it's a beautiful design it's got more colors than any of my other steam engines because it has two completely separate mechanisms for inlet and outlet uh, and, uh, and it runs and it's quite fun so hope you uh, managed to get yours together and have learned a little something about uh, the trade-offs between efficiency and power in steam engines. Thank you very much.